Welcome to Webisode 4. I'm Chris Woolery, the Residential Energy Coordinator for Mountain Association. We're a founding member of the Rural Power Coalition. We've streamlined, as you know, a 90-minute webinar into a six-part mini-series to let folks like you know why rural co-ops are integral in the fight for energy equity and clean energy. Also, how the ARC Rural Power Coalition's $100 billion retire and reinvest proposal will impact rural households and communities. And finally, how you can join this movement for rural power. The previous webisode was an introduction into retiring coal. In this webisode, we will put some of our proposals into context with a focus on Kentucky and answer questions like, why have states like Kentucky been slow to respond to the clean energy transition? How are rural folks being affected by current debt levels? And what would reinvestment look like on the ground in rural places? So let's put it into context. Kentucky could be considered a rational resistor to transition from coal because they have the most to lose and they're most invested. So for instance, you'll see along the bottom here, this is a graph that shows the biggest generators and transmitters in the country as ranked by Sierra Club based upon their plans for coal transitions. And so you'll see a big scale of generators here, but every single utility that serves Kentucky is in the failing grade section of this graph toward the end on the right, all of those blue arrows. And every one of the, of the generators that Philip mentioned is also in that F grade section of the graph. And to put the numbers into context, what it means for Kentucky, we are talking about a long-term total debt to the federal government of almost $2.2 billion and a total debt of $2.8 billion. So then to go back to that slide, $2.1 billion in debt means Eastern Kentuckians are paying $563,000 every day to service that debt. That's $29 a month for every single electric meter served by East Kentucky Power Cooperative. So that gives you an idea of the numbers at stake and why Kentucky might be considered a resistor and that might be considered rational by some. And so you'll see that the utilities themselves recognize this problem. They've recognized the debt, they want to be able to service the debt, and they really want more than anything a just and reasonable transition to a zero carbon economy that would deliver affordability and reliability to the communities they serve. They just recognize it's gonna be very expensive to do. And so you'll see that as Kentucky is dealing with energy poverty, a high energy burden, the middle of a global pandemic, we have just weathered a huge ice storm and in which people lost power for more than a week in many cases. And now we are underwater, having dealt with historic floods in which uh, cities like Urban, Beattyville, and Paintsville are underwater. This gives you an idea of the need, the tremendous need in places like Kentucky and the communities that we serve in this coalition. Here, I would like to put this proposal and its potential impacts on Kentucky in the context. And it starts with a huge question, right? What would you do with $2.17 billion? That's the debt that EKPC owns to the federal government. And they could, under this proposal, completely erase with new investments and so there'd be folks on this call, right, who would say, do what Arkansas did. Invest in some solar and some site-specific pay-as-you-save energy efficiency investments. And a few later, years later, they file for and, and grant a 4.5% rate decrease. I'll tell you what, Eastern Kentuckians would love to see that. They are facing rate increases every two to four years. That's one thing you could do with $2.17 billion. You know, I'm a little biased. I'm a, I'm a pay-as-you-say program administrator. So I want to put these numbers into context. If I had $2.17 billion, I could do what we've been doing, just a lot more of it. I could invest $7,743 in homes across Kentucky, 280,000 homes. I could create a monthly net cash flow from those investments of $12 for each of those homeowners. If you add that up, that's over $40 million of new cash flow running around Eastern Kentucky going to folks who are going to spend it in their communities. Oh, did I mention that those investments quite literally pay for themselves over time? That's what pay as you save mean. I think this is a great question. What would you do? You probably wouldn't do it 
the same thing I do would do, but you might provide bill relief, broadband, democracy reforms, or anything that fits in that bucket, as long as those cold debts are retired. Hi again. We hope you enjoyed episode four of our six-part series. The key takeaway from this session is that rural folks need a just transition to clean energy, one that lowers their bills rather than burdening them with even more debt. Please stay tuned to social media and check your inboxes because we'll be sending more content your way, along with action opportunities to advance rural power now. Thanks. 